How you doing? Welcome to Gearheads. Today, we're going to be working on my Miata and doing a full refresh of the entire clutch hydraulic system. So today we're going to be putting a new master cylinder, a new slave cylinder, and we're going to be doing a new stainless steel braided line in the clutch. And this is Tim. He's oh, awesome. No. He's going to be here helping me out, uh, filming and helping lend a hand once in a while. So thank you, buddy. As far as reasons you might want to do this job, um, there's a few of them. If you're having a leak in your system, you might be experiencing a, uh, a just an inconsistent clutch pedal where sometimes it grabs in different spots. Uh, you also, a common one is you wake up in the morning after the car sat all night or maybe you parked it for a day or two and you push your clutch down to go to put the car in gear and it just doesn't want to go in gear. And to fix that, you might be pumping your clutch pedal up a bit. Well, the whole reason you're doing that in the first place is because you're losing pressure in the uh, clutch hydraulic system. So if that's any problem you're having, it's usually better just to replace the master and slave cylinder together. It's not a difficult job and it's not very expensive either. I think this cost me... Um, about $40 on Amazon and parts, which is very reasonable. And then you're gonna to wanna to do new fluid as well. So add a $5 for a bottle of brake fluid on there as well. If you're interested in making a small upgrade while you do this job, uh, one thing to note is I'm gonna be installing the stainless steel braided clutch line at the same time as well. Uh, it gives you a little bit stiffer of a pedal feel, which is kind of nice and a little bit more consistency in your clutch pedal. Other than that, it's not really that big of a deal. So it's kind of optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. But anyways, uh, let's get started. Let's do it. When you're placing anything in the clutch hydraulic system, like your master slave cylinder, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get the fluid out. So uh, let me show you where the master cylinder is here. So it's down here on the driver's side of the engine bay next to your brake master cylinder where your brake fluid is. And if you pop this cap off, you can see the fluid down there. Now, if you have a turkey baster or uh, maybe like a wide syringe or something like that, you can siphon all that Blew it out and put it into a container. Um, but I forgot to bring a turkey baster with me, so what I'm gonna do instead is just open the bleeder valve on the slave cylinder and let all the fluid drain through that way. To get to your slave cylinder, go ahead and jack the passenger side of your car up and put a jack stand underneath it. Before or after you jack up the car, at least on Miatas, when you get to the slave cylinder, it makes it a lot easier if you crank the uh, steering wheel and move them all the way over to the left. And the reason for that is because it gives you access down here to the slave cylinder over there. All right, so if you're underneath the passenger side of the car uh, and looking, this up here is your slave cylinder. And it's bolted on the, si on the uh, side of the transmission. So we're not gonna pull these out just yet because we're gonna go ahead and uh, bleed it, or not bleed it, we're gonna open the bleed valve and drain the fluid out first. And we're gonna be taking out that uh, other clutch line that we don't want anymore. Um, but when we do get to it, it's a 12 millimeter bolt here and a 12 millimeter, uh, millimeter bolt right on top of it. It's a lot easier though, if you go through the hole you made for yourself here in the wheel well, to go ahead and access the bleeder and pull that line out. So let's do that. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, reach your hand in here through the tire uh, wheel well, pull off that little rubber boot on top of the bleeder. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the line off here, but you're gonna wanna have a number eight for this bleeder when you bleed the system later. So let me break this in. There we go. Alright, after you take this guy out, if you're gonna be replacing your uh, stainless or you're placing your line here with a stainless steel one like I am, you're gonna want to take this bolt out right here that holds the line down. And that is gonna be a number 10, and it helps if you have a couple extensions so you have enough leverage to break it loose. Cool, next, uh, go ahead and we'll just take the slave cylinder out and uh, you can sort of see right here, there is a 12 millimeter. 
and you can reach that one from the top here pretty easily and then there is a 12 mil right below on the other side of the slave cylinder as well and um, you might want to get that from the bottom now that you have your 12 millimeter go ahead and stick that in here and break that top one loose All right, next one is actually the hardest one in the whole job, and it's going to be this guy right here, and it's still not that bad. You just have to crawl underneath the car and get your wrench on there. Man, it is filthy under here. It needs to be cleaned. All right, we're out, and that's how you take out the slave cylinder. All right, if all you're doing is swapping your slave and master cylinders, you can go ahead and skip this step. But if you're not, you're gonna need a number 10 to start taking the top of your old line out. And we already got the bottom off at the slave cylinder. And there's a couple spots on the way down that it mounts up, but this should be almost it. So you get your number 10 here and just loosen this guy. All right, there we go. That piece is off, and then you're gonna want to pop off this little uh, this little clip here. You can shove a screwdriver through there, or you can just use a small uh, little little uh, wrench like I'm using. Whoop. There it goes. Yeah, see. So that's all for this piece there at least for the top. Once you've got that top part of the line disconnected, then there's only one more spot that we didn't show. Uh, and it's behind the head of the engine on top of the transmission down here. And you can kind of see it down there if I wiggle this. Can you see where this is going to? It's straight down there. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna really be able to film that part. It's just too tight in there. But uh, it's the exact same process as that top mount right here was. So it's gonna be just the same size wrench as this one was to get off and then it's going to have a clip on it and then you should be able to pull that line free and there will be a mount there don't worry about it it's not worth trying to take it out for right now you can delete it later if you need to do your starter or something because it uses a shared bolt with the starter so anyways i'm going to go ahead and get that taken out and then we can move on to putting the new one in once you reach back in there and you unscrew uh, this guy from behind the head. If you already took that bottom piece out from above the slave cylinder like I showed you, this will just fall right out. And now the top part, which is the rubber part of the line in here, is only being held in with a clamp that is the exact same type that you found right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick a pry bar down there and pop it off and that thing will come right out. Now that the old line is out, I got my new stainless steel line ready to go in and uh, you're gonna just bring it back over the side here and just point this end that goes to the slave cylinder just down and just push it down into that general area. You can see this is much easier to deal with than the factory one was. So then just bring it back up here and uh, bolt this in. And once you have it slid through as well, go ahead and slide that clip through that the factory one had in there. Now that you got your stainless steel braided line in, uh, we're gonna reinstall with a new slave cylinder. So go ahead and reach through the passenger wheel well here. And uh, on the tip of the slave cylinder, that metal piece goes through the clutch fork. So look for that and make sure you slide it through. There we go, I got it lined up and then I can get one bolt started. I had one bolt slid into it to start with just so that uh, it wouldn't fall on me. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and just bolt that in with my number 12 extension here all right once you have that top bolt started in it's probably easier to go ahead and roll under the car and get the other one in by hand so go ahead and make sure you have your number 12 wrench handy and do that Now that that bottom one is actually tightened down, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the top one as well. There we go. Next, let's go ahead and put the uh, put the line in and get that started. Oh. 
just get that on with your fingers as far as you can before you put the wrench on there because it'll only be a little quarter turn at a time you can reach with that. All right, now that's your number 10. So go ahead and take the 10 down there and bolt that guy on. Oh, this one's not a 10. Surprise, surprise, it's different than the old one was. All right, so correction, that's gonna be an 11, not a 10. All right, so we got the slave cylinder installed and we got the stainless steel line put in. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the master cylinder, which is the last thing, and it's a very easy job as well. So you're just gonna need a number 12, and for me at least, it's easiest with a uh, short, like three inch extension like this and a long socket. And then uh, just reach down in here and crack them loose. So once you have these two cracked loose, uh, you can probably get them the rest of the way out with your fingers, and then you wanna break this guy loose and take it off as well, and this is gonna be a number 10. So well, that's off. Let's go ahead and take out these guys the rest of the way. There she is, out, done. Reinstallation is the same as removal, so let's just go ahead and put this down, slide the uh, slide the clutch master cylinder on. Let's get those nuts started back on there. Yeah, awesome. So we got the uh, new master cylinder installed. We got the slave cylinder and the stainless line. So now we just got to go ahead and fill that system up with fluid. And this part's definitely a two person job. So if you did all this yourself, you're going to need a second person here so that they can go ahead and pump on the clutch for you to help you uh, bleed the system out and get all the extra air out. So we will show you how to do that right now. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and fill up the master cylinder reservoir here with some new fluid. And I'm using dot four, which you can use in this system. You can mix dot three and four or put dot four in a dot three system, but make sure you don't ever mix dot five with those. Uh, the bonus and the reason I'm putting dot four in here is it's rated for higher temperatures. Next, we're gonna be bleeding the fluid. So now, since we did all new uh, lines and a new slave and master cylinder, it's gonna be completely bone dry. Now, the best way to um, get some fluid running back through the system again is actually gonna to be to come down here on the slave cylinder side, crack it open, and then uh, have your partner behind the seat start pumping a bit at the pedal. And uh, you can come over here actually and watch. Go ahead and start pumping, Matt. You can watch, there'll be bubbles coming out of here and the level will start dropping. Once you've seen the level actually drop a significant amount, then you can go back down to the slave cylinder and watch for fluid to actually start coming. Now that we actually have some fluid in the system, I'm gonna go ahead and top this off again. Here we go. And then I'm gonna go down there with my number eight wrench. And I'm going to shut the bleeder valve once the fluid actually starts coming out. Here, go ahead and pump a bit, Matt. Once I actually start to see fluid coming out, oh, there we go, it's actually coming. So, stop. So here's the problem. Once you get to that point, you're not getting anywhere anymore by pumping away at the pedal. Um, and the reason for that is because with this open, you're squirting some fluid out, but then every time you pull the pedal, your partner actually pulls the pedal back, it just lets air back in. So now here's what you're gonna do. Matt, go ahead and pump the pedal uh, several times and tell me when it starts to get firmer, okay? So once your partner pumps the pedal up and starts to feel a firmness in the pedal and it gets stiffer then you're going to have them hold the pedal down and you'll open the bleed valve let all the bubbles out and shut it before any air goes back into the system again so uh, we'll show you how that works a few times matt's been pumping the pedal for probably about 30 seconds or so and uh, i'm going to go ahead and have him stand down on the pedal and i'm going to crack the bleeder valve open and then after it lets the bubbles escape and a little bit of fluid with it then uh, I'm gonna shut it, and then after that, we can have Matt start pumping again. 
And you're gonna repeat this process over and over again. It might take you only five minutes, it might take you 25 minutes, I don't know what to tell you, but you're gonna keep doing this until when he stands on the pedal or your partner stands on the pedal and you open that valve, no bubbles come out. Once you've done that a couple times, you can be sure there isn't any bubbles in there anymore. And then you can go ahead and just be happy and drive along your merry way. <laughs> All right, Matt, stop, uh, hold on it. All right, so when you open the valve, you're gonna see it's really bubbly, it's almost foamy the first couple times you do this and take it out. See how wet it is? Or not wet, see how white it is? All right, keep pumping. But this is good though, that means that we're actually finally starting to build, a, build pressure and we're getting down to where we're just getting the rest of the bubbles out. So our lines should be pretty good now. We're almost done. You just tell me now when it's getting further. All right, hold. All right, pump. Go, Tim. Go, Tim, go. There we go. Shut it. That fluid looks good. I think we're good to go, guys. Now just pump it back up, and it should uh, stiffen the pedal up. Make sure you come back around to your master cylinder here and uh, check the level. And we're right at about max right now, which is perfect, so awesome. Thank you, both of you. That works really hard. So there you go. All new hydraulic components that you need to get your clutch working properly. We've got the master cylinder slate, and I even put that stainless steel line, even though it's not super necessary, unless your uh, factory one happened to be leaking. But it does give you a slightly stiffer pedal, which is nice. So anyways, thank you for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. And thank you so much to Tim and Matthew for helping me out. And uh, stick with us and watch for the next one. All right, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And remember, keep wrenching. We're going down under. See, si, down under. <clears throat> Mexican and Australian. <laughs> yeah. so. Mexico's down under from the US. <laughs>